I've spent months working on a new update for the latency tool, specifically OSLTT CS in terms of new features anyway, which mostly involves testing mice and keyboard latency. So I thought I'd explain what's new and how you actually test mice and keyboards with my tools. First, what's new? The most obvious thing is that I've redesigned the UI. While I really liked having all of the options right in front of you rather than hidden away in menus, as I added more test modes in particular, it was getting ridiculous to keep making the window taller and taller as more test source options were added. Plus, having the trigger and sensor types split from the source wasn't super intuitive. So now all three of the important settings are next to each other in little dropdowns that I can now add more options to without having to redesign the whole window. I've also added a results folder button, so you can now get access to the raw data easier without having to go and manually find it. I've added more preset options and clearly way more space for more presets too, so if you have any suggestions, please do let me know. Uh, ideally on our Discord in the OSLTT OSRTT channel or via email or on the GitHub repo. You've got options. Anyway, there's also a few new things in the results viewer, namely the results settings page. This lets you see either the bar charts with all the average min and maxes by default, or at least when the viewer opens, or the scatter plot with the actual raw data. You can still switch with, uh, between the uh, them with the, the button at the top, of course, so no big deal. It's just whichever one you wanna see first. You can now also automatically take screenshots of that default graph, both with a white background or a transparent background. You can change the text color on the charts, which is especially helpful for those transparent screenshots if you post on, say, a dark background like I tend to do. And if I open up a result here, there's a new screenshot button too. This is actually a feature requested by Random Frank P, as he does a really cool overlay of multiple results together. So this basically takes a screenshot, but removes the grid and chart axis, so you just get the data points and line connecting them. You can set the fixed Y maximum in the result settings so that all of your screenshots will line up when you layer them all together. The big new feature though is mouse move latency testing. This is all possible thanks to the peripheral testing kit on the new CS version of the latency tool, and is what we'll be focusing on for the most part of this video, at least this testing method anyway. This new test lets you measure how long the mouse takes to start registering a movement. This isn't the sort of full sensor latency that, uh, for example, Artings reports, as that requires a servo motor and a test jig, but this is the best that I can do with this setup, and is at least the initial movement latency, which is still a, a very helpful measurement to have nonetheless. So that's all the new features. Let's get to the guide part. I've already done a guide with the microphone and two pin inputs uh, that I'll link in the cards above if you wanna learn more about those testing methods. Although I think it's worth explaining why all three of those measurement methods are going to be different, even on the exact same mouse or keyboard, even at the same time. Using the microphone as the trigger will yield you the shortest measurements. This is because the sound, either from the mouse clicking or the button, you know, bottoming out for your key switch, is created after the switch has already electrically actuated and sent that signal. For a higher polling rate, like a higher than a thousand hertz polling rate mice in particular, this means that the mouse generally has sent the signal before the latency tool has even started counting, giving you effectively a result of zero milliseconds. The two pin input is technically the most accurate as that starts counting as soon as the switch is electrically actuated, although it's the most tedious to set up having to solder the wires to the mouse or keyboard that you're testing. And then there is the tap input with the peripheral testing kit. This gives you the longest measurement as it includes the pre-travel of the switch or button but it also gives you the most realistic, as you don't experience the latency of a, a switch or a button right from the actuation point, you have to press the damn thing first. That does mean that how you test it actually has 
quite the effect though. Uh, so, you know, kind of hence why I'm making this guide. So since testing mice and keyboards are the exact same process, just with differing switch travels, I'll stick with mice here. Although another great idea from Frank was that if you're testing a load of keyboards, get a spare keycap and put the aluminium tape on this and then just swap the keycap between boards. You don't have to use or waste any more, you know, of, of the nice conductive tape. Anyway, for mice, the main thing is to stick the tape to the mouse button, leaving a bit of a tail off to the side for the crocodile clip to grab onto. Stick the software into the mouse testing or mouse click testing mode, give it a description in the text box so you know what you're testing, and hit start. Then, using the red banana plug, tap on the top of the mouse button and on top of the tape to both click and trigger the tool. The LED on the tool will flash when it detects a click. If it doesn't, or if you find that you end up getting results of like 0.002 milliseconds, uh, try leaving three seconds between results, uh, as that's the sort of timeout time, and that should catch the tool up if it's gotten out of sync, say if you've clicked more than once between tapping. Uh, you want to tap at a consistent rate, about once per second or so, and tap with the same force and speed each time. The harder you tap, the faster the result will be, but the harder it will be to be consistent. Something like this is great. You want to do as many taps as you can for the best accuracy. I tend to do between 50 and 100 personally, and then when you're done, hit the button on the tool to end the test. For mouse move latency, stick the tape on the side of the mouse and change the software to the mouse move option. Again, give it a description, and then hit start, ideally by using the hotkey, which in my case is F10, but you can set it to any of the F keys rather than using the mouse to do it, that might mess things up a bit. Um, due to the mouse continually moving, you know, once you've tapped it, I've set it up so that you have to press a key on your keyboard to reset between taps. So hit the side of the mouse on top of the tape, and then once it's stopped moving, reposition it if you need to, tap a key on your keyboard, really anything other than spacebar or the hotkey to start and stop the test. The LED will flash to show that it's ready for the next tap, and then tap again. Repeat that until you're happy you've got enough data, then again hit the button on the tool to end the test. As I said, keyboard testing is the exact same process as mouse click testing, although it is worth noting that because the pre-travel distance is often considerably longer than a mouse click, the results will both be longer and more susceptible to variance depending on how you are sort of tapping the key. If you are testing an analog board with an adjustable actuation point, you might want to set the actuation point to as high as you can to if you want to reduce that variance as much as possible. And that is pretty much it, at least for using the peripheral testing kit anyway on mice and keyboards. I would note that if you end up getting some inconsistent results, often what's happened is the software and board have gotten out of sync. So again, either wait for a timeout, that three second delay, or uh, just make sure that you're not like pressing keys or clicking the mouse button or moving or whatever uh, between runs. Generally that works. Also, if you happen to forget to use the button to press the, uh, to, to end the test, you might need to reconnect the board. It's just a, a state of where, where the board gets into in its loop for testing. So there you go. Uh, if you are, if you already have one of the OSLTT CS boards, then make sure you update to the latest version. And currently it's one version 1.7 for both the software and the firmware. Make sure you update both. And if you don't have one and you want one, head to osrtt.com, linked in the description, as I make and sell these tools and ship them worldwide. So have a look if you fancy checking one out. Also, if you have any uh, issues or suggestions for features or updates or presets, like I said, uh, jump into Discord, uh, shoot me an email, or head over to the GitHub repo uh, if you want to get in touch and suggest or complain about anything, feel free to let me know. And otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to see more videos, 
kind of like this one. I guess I will likely do more guides for my own tools. Feel free to hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notification icon. And of course, if you want to see me testing loads of stuff with these tools, also subscribe too. There'll be plenty of other videos in the end cards, including some of the videos that I've used this in and used this with. Um, and like I said, if you want to pick one up, head to osrtd.com, linked in the description. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.